Hi, so a bit of an unusual video today. The old Discovery 4, the battery keeps going flat. And when you try and go into the Bluetooth menu on the phone, it might start. Let's see if it starts. Nope. Right, the Bluetooth module seems to have developed a fault and it's draining the battery. So what I'm going to try to do today is remove the Bluetooth module from the boot and we'll see if we can repair it. So the Bluetooth module lives under this panel here. So we need to remove that. So the first thing I'm going to do is we've got a little stay here that we need to pop this clip off and remove that. So I'm just going to do that now. Right, that's that out of the way. Right, next I'm going to pop this little clip cover thing off here. Like that. And then remove part of this trim. So the next thing I'm going to remove is this seat belt anchor, which is a Torx T50. Get that out of the way. I need to pop this little cap off here. Alright, next we need to remove a posi head screw, which is down here. Like so. So I've undone this anchor point here, which is used for securing luggage in the boot. And now we should just be to get this panel out of the way. That's just a few clips and it just unclips. And that's the Bluetooth module there. Right, so there's a connector at the side here, you just press the little clip in and that comes out. This is actually a fibre optic cable for something called the Most Bus, which is some media transport thing. And then we've got two T30 screws at the top here. Right, this should just come off now. And we've got a clip here, which if you press the centre of it in and then lift the little black bit up, and there we go, that's the module removed. Right, we'll get it on the bench and we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. Right, we've got the Bluetooth module on the bench here now. And how does this come apart? We've got some plastic clips here. Right, let's zoom down a bit and see what we can see. Looks like we've got some kind of flash chip here. Looks like a, I think it's a 74245. So I think that's a level shifter. Okay, we've got a main CPU or something here. Looks like RAM. Not sure what that one is. Right, let's see if we can get this out of its case. And we'll flip it over. So. The board seems to work for a bit. Like, so when you disconnect the battery and then reconnect the battery, the Bluetooth seems to work for a short period and then it seems to crash. So I'm just wondering if it could be something to do with these capacitors possibly. So I've looked online and I found out on this connector here, because some people have fitted these boards into the Discovery 3. And somebody put the pin out of this connector here. And these pins here are ground. And these ones here are 12 volt. So I think what my plan is, is hook this up to the bench power supply. We'll set the bench power supply to 12 or 13 volts. And then we'll get the oscilloscope. And we'll see what the output's like on some of these capacitors, just to see if there's any ripple or spikes or anything. And we'll just check that we've got all the voltages present as well. Right, I'm going to solder a couple of wires on and then we'll hook it up to the bench power supply. Right, I'll just zoom out a fraction. And we'll get the bench power supply and the oscilloscope on. Right, I've got it hooked up to the bench power supply, so we'll just switch that on. 
and I'm going to set it to 13.8 and at about half an amp so right well that's it on I'll just do this wire a bit better right so it's drawn or it was drawn about quarter of an amp and it's just stopped now it's not drawn anything let's try switching it on and off again right so it's drawn about 0.2 of an amp now and now it's just gone off right let's see if we've got any voltages anywhere it's not actually drawing any current at the moment We've got 13.7 there. And 1.1. Well, 1, but it's going down. I'll try switching it off and on again. I'm switching it on now. Right, so a 13.4 there. And now it's just gone off. Now I wonder if it's because we haven't got the optical cable plugged in and it's not getting any activity or something it's switching off. I wonder what happens if I put a torch or something. Let's just try that, see if that does anything. Right, well it's, it's actually came back on there now. I don't know if you can see the little... Yes, when I shine the torch down there, it thinks it's trying to connect or something and it's keeping it powered up, so I'm just going to leave the torch there for now. Right, so we've got 13.4 there. 13.4 there. So I guess this is the input capacitor, and when it gets a signal it must activate maybe this MOSFET here and switch power to this capacitor, which then acts as a reservoir for these book converter here I guess so let's see so we've got 3.3 .3 there and we've got 5 volts there and a little inductor down here we've got 5.1 on that one and another little inductor here It's just got 13 on both sides, so I'm not sure about that one. I've got 14.7 on that capacitor, which seems a bit of an odd value. Let's just try flipping this board over and see if I can get the light to shine in there still. I've got 5 volts on that inductor. Right, I think I'll connect the scope up and we'll have a look at these capacitors just to see if the output's quite smooth. And then we'll actually get the thing powered up. Right, so I'll switch the scope on. Right, so let's see what we'll get on here then. Well, I mean, that looks nice and flat and stable. Didn't have any issues with that one. Let's just try this one. Again, that looks nice and flat and stable. I threw just the voltage on there. And that looks fine. And that one looks fine. I can't immediately see anything that would cause any problems. I guess it's worth trying the thermal camera just in case that will show anything up. Alright, got the thermal camera out. Let's have a look, see if there's anything getting particularly hot or. A little 
bit of heat on that chip there. There's not really much else on this side of the board. Right, I'll just swap this over. And we'll try on the other side. A little bit of heat on that one, but nothing out of the way. I think this torch is starting to die. There's a little bit of heat on that diode there. I think it's a diode, yeah. And a little bit on that IC there. A RAM chip. This is the main CPU, I guess it is. I'm not sure what that chip is there. I mean, there's nothing particularly getting hot. Well, I can't see anything obvious. Let's see the power supply seem okay. So what I'm thinking, possibly a bad ball on one of these BGAs, or I don't know whether to take these capacitors off to check them just in case, because I did have a an issue with the power supply. And it turned out to be these types of capacitors that were faulty. So I think I'll take these off just in case. We'll just double check them. So I'm going to use some of this low melt solder. That's quite good stuff. If you haven't used it before I'd recommend it. Especially for taking off things like HDMI sockets and things like that. It's quite handy. Uh, there's some links in the video description if you're interested in any of the tools that I use. Such as the blue mat or things like this or USB testers or whatever and flux speaking of which I'll just put a bit of flux on here first right that's that off right, let's do the same on this one let's turn that around a bit so it's easier for us to get the eye in it Right, there we go. Right, so that says a hundred and eleven microfarads, and it's supposed to be a hundred. And the V loss and the ESR looks okay. So I'd say that capacitor's fine. Let's try this one. Mm, for some reason it's not showing the ESR on this one. Just seems to be showing the VLOS. I don't know why that is. It normally shows up the ESR as well. Let's just try the other one again. That's strange. Because it did show up the ESR a moment ago. Right, I think I'll let that switch off a second, just try that again, just to be sure. I just thought I'd try a standard capacitor here, and this one's showing the ESR on it. But I don't know why these two aren't. So I might just change those capacitors just in case. Let's try this one. I mean, this board will be 10 year old. 
so it might just be worth changing these just in case I can't see it hurting unfortunately I haven't got any surface mount ones so I'll just have to make do with these well they should go in like that okay I'll just trim these legs off a little bit I need to clean off that low melt solder as well let's get a bit solder wick in a bit a bit flux there I'm just going to change the tip on my iron as well Right, let me give that a little bit of a clean up and get some fresh solder on it that one on right and obviously I don't know if that's made any difference or whatever it's just I wasn't getting any ESR reading on those which is a bit odd a bit unusual anyway The only thing is, I can't really check whether it's made any difference or not. Whether it's actually working unless I put it back in the vehicle and we'll try it for a bit. I'll probably not get readings on these with them being in circuit. Right, it's been about a week and the battery hasn't gone flat. And it appears that the Bluetooth module is working. It hasn't gone off. It's, you can still connect the phone to it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it back in the case. Just for testing purposes, I didn't put the case back on. I just thought, well, we'll just try it like this for ease. Just in case it didn't work. So I'll attach this back on. We'll get the side panel back on. And then we'll show you it working. So I've got the panel back in situ now. So I just need to put the seatbelt anchor point back on. Screw that part back in and then there's one screw to go in over at that side. So I shall do those now. There's a little cover to go on here as well. I'll just pop that back on. Like so. The other thing we need to do is to reattach the tailgate support cable which should just go on like so and then we'll just slide the clip back on there we go all right now we've just got this screw to go in this hole here all right that should be us done let's go test it all right, let's start it up. And there we go, straight on, no problems. So the battery's not going flat now, and the Bluetooth's working, so I'd say this is now fixed. Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.